Hello everybody, a very short lecture for 9.6a. I'm gonna give you one example problem only and then you're free to go on Delta Math today. I wanna to show you how to apply that coordinate geometry that we practiced in 9.5. So here's your example problem. Quadrilateral ABCD has coordinates A, B, C, and D as shown. Classify the quadrilateral and prove your classification. So the first thing that I want to do anytime I have a problem like this is I need a sketch. Um, I see that I do go into the negative values just a little bit with negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 2. So I don't need a lot of negative values. My highest y value is 7. My highest x value is 5. So I don't need a big, huge graph. Um, but I now am pretty well aware of what kind of space I need. And I can go ahead and graph this. So 3, 5 is A. And I'm going to label it up so that I can grab those numbers later a little bit easier. B is uh, 7, negative 2. Oh, I think I switched my X and Y earlier when I was talking. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 2 is B. C is negative 1, negative 1. And lastly is negative 2, 4. Move that out. Negative 2, 4. This is D negative 2, 4. So I can go ahead and sketch that out. Oops, that was pretty awful, so I'm going to erase that. That's better. Fix my axis. And let's see, it looks like I might have a kite here. It looks like it might be just a generic quadrilateral. I'm not really sure. If this is a kite, I know that my adjacent pairs of sides are congruent. I would have to show that DC is congruent to DA, and I would have to show that BA is congruent to BC. Um, alternatively, I could investigate the diagonals and show that they're perpendicular and that AC is bisected. Um, we could do that separately, and I could do that as a second example. For method number one, I'm going to go ahead and investigate the lengths of the sides. So I'm looking at my shape to kind of get an idea of what I think I'm going to tackle, and then I'm going to just start doing the work. So I'm going to start finding some lengths. AD squared, and I'm going to go ahead and figure out, okay, what is my change in Y and my change in X? My change in Y, I can see it right there, is only 1, 5 minus 4, but I'm going to go ahead and show the math just to make sure that it's really clear because I need to have a proof. So I'm going to make sure that all of the math is there and that no one can argue with it. And then 3 minus a negative 2. Simplify that. I get 1 squared plus 5 squared gets me 1 plus 25, gets me 26. So AD is the square root of 26. Let's continue. I'm going to look at DC. And DC is going to be 4. Oops, not I said 4 and I wrote 5. 4 minus negative 1 squared. Negative 2 minus negative 1 squared. That's a 5 squared and that's a 1 squared. So I'm going to get again DC equals square root of 26. I can see that it's the same as right there. So I can go ahead and shortcut that a little bit, make myself my life a little bit easier. I'm going to squish that up so I have a little bit more room. So I have already shown that AD is congruent to DC. I can go ahead and mark that on my diagram. Um, now let's go ahead and investigate AB and BC. So similarly, AB squared This is 7, this is negative 4, I get 49 plus 16. AB is the square root of 49 plus 16, which is 50 plus 15, 65. Go ahead and find the other length. So that's BC squared, so BC equals the square root of 65 also. 
Um, gosh darn it, out of space again. Squish that up again, sorry. Therefore, AB is congruent to BC. So I can go ahead and mark that off. So my proof, I can say A, B, C, D is a kite. I thought it was a kite at the beginning. I went ahead and did the math. I showed that that is indeed the case. A, B, C, D is a kite because both pairs of adjacent sides, how do I spell, my goodness, of adjacent sides are congruent. The end. Let's take a look at another method. So here I copied what I started with at the beginning. Now I wanna go ahead and investigate the diagonals. So I'm gonna look at these diagonals right here and I know that in a kite, they must be perpendicular and this guy needs to be bisected. The other one does not or it would actually end up being a rhombus, not a kite. So I'm gonna investigate this in two pieces. So first, I'm gonna look at slopes. So slope, we always say is M. The slope of segment AC is rise over run. So five minus negative one, change in Y over change in X, three minus negative one. Six over four, that reduces to three over two. Okay, I'm gonna look at the slope of the other diagonal. The slope of DB, rise over run again, 4 minus negative 2, now change in x, negative 2 minus 7. This is 6 over 9, which reduces to 2 over 3. Oh, that's negative. I missed the negative right there. 3 halves and negative 2 thirds are negative reciprocals. Therefore, db is perpendicular to AC. Next, I need to investigate whether or not um, this line DB goes through this um, midpoint right here. So I'm gonna have to write an equation for point for line DB. This is a much more involved um, a little bit. Um, and I need to show that it goes through that midpoint. So first let's find the midpoint of AC. So let's call this point X. Um, and we're gonna show that the point x, oops, I don't wanna use an equal sign. Point x is three plus negative one averaged and five plus negative one averaged, which becomes point three minus one is two, over two is one, five plus negative one is four, over two is two. So precisely this is the point one, two. It's not graphed super great. So x is the point one comma two. I need to make sure that that's a point that db is actually going through. So I need to actually figure out an equation for db. We can use um, the point slope form. I'm gonna go ahead and use this point and this slope that I've already calculated. So y minus negative two equals negative two thirds times x minus seven. I don't even need to simplify that because my only job right now is to prove that this point exists on this line and makes this true. So I'm gonna take one comma two and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in there. So X equal to one and Y equal to two and let's see if this is true. So Y minus negative two is plus two. Does that equal negative two thirds X times one minus seven? So let's see, that's four. Does that equal negative two thirds times negative six? That equals 12 over three, which is indeed four. So my final proof right here is because AC is bisected by BD, at a right angle, A, B, C, D is a kite. And there we go. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Hope this example helps you out with uh, what you're going to do and the rest of Delta Math.